When a bond is transacted between coupon payment dates, we will have to calculate the full price, which is equal to the flat price plus the accrued interest. The full price is also called the dirty price or the invoice price, and the flat price is called the clean price or the quoted price. So in terms of the timeline, okay, we are at this particular date called the settlement date, which is between the uh, coupon payment dates. So zero, it means uh, zero here refers to the previous coupon payment period. One will be the next coupon payment period. So PMT here would represent the coupon. So here I have uh, I've colored the coupon, the previous coupon in gray is just to show that this coupon has been paid. Okay, so now we are here, okay, on the settlement date. So now we, we will have to calculate what is the full price or the dirty price of the bond on this date. This is the price that has to be paid by the buyer to the seller to account for the accrued interest, okay, that has been accruing since the last coupon payment period. So in this case, uh, there are two days, that, two periods that we need to know, okay, there is a lowercase t and an uppercase t here. For the lowest case, the, the lowercase t, this represents the number of days from the last coupon, okay, from the last coupon to the settlement date, okay, which is represented by this settlement date. And then the uppercase t here would be the number of days in the coupon period. So to compute the full price, okay, what we will first do is we will calculate the PV, the present value of all the remaining cash flows to the previous coupon payment period. Okay, so here to calculate the full price, I will first calculate the PV, the present value of the remaining coupons and also the face value, and then I will discount it to period zero, which is the previous coupon payment, okay, or the last coupon payment. And then from there, I will, co I will compound it to the settlement date. Okay, so once I compute this PV, okay, the, 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 the value of the bond in the last coupon, uh, last coupon period, then I will compound it, okay, I will find the future value of that uh, bond value up to the settlement date. So, of course, from there, once you get the full price, you can also work out the flat price, okay, and the accrued interest for this period will be the fraction of the lowercase t over the uppercase t times the coupon period. And if you subtract the accrued interest from the full price, we will then get the flat price. Now let's look at an example of a 6.5% semi-annual coupon payment bond that matures on 15 March 2027. So the coupon payments are made on 15 March and 15 September each year. The annual yield to maturity is 5.8% and accrued interest is based on actual to actual day count convention. So let's calculate the price of the bond for settlement on 17 May 2021, okay, which is between the two coupon payment dates of 15 March and 15 September of 2021. And we'll assume that the par value is equals to 100. So for a semi-annual paid bond uh, with a coupon rate of 6.5% per year, so to get the coupon payment, we will uh, take 6.5%, okay, and then we'll multiply by 100, the par value, and then we'll divide by 2, okay, so that gives us 3.25 as the coupon paid per every semi-annual period. Now, uh, to get the full bond price, uh, what we'll do is we need to determine the settlement date, which is on 17th of May 2021. So to get the value of the bond on this day, Okay, we will first start by calculating the present value of all the remaining cash flows, okay, up to 15 March 2021. Okay, we'll find the value of the bond on 15 March 2021. So from 15 March 2021 up to the maturity, 15 March 2027, there is a remaining six years, six years to maturity. And over semi, if you convert it to semi-annual periods, that will be six years times two, which is 12 semi-annual periods. So based on this, we will then calculate the present value of the remaining cash flows. Okay, so that includes uh, 12 coupons and also one face value, which is uh, at maturity. So we'll key in this to your financial calculator. 
So let me try and do that. All right, so with a face value of 100 as the FV, the future value, uh, the yield to maturity, 5.8% is divided by 2 to get the yield to maturity, okay, for a semi-annual period. And then we key in this as the IY, the interest rate per year. And then uh, th this will be 3.25 as the payment per period. And then 12 will be the, okay, uh, number of periods, yeah. Okay, so the IY in this case will be the interest rate uh, per period, which is uh, for every semi-annual period. Okay, so let's just check. Uh, it's 12 periods, 2.9%. Uh, PV is what we're going to compute. PMT is 3.25 and future value is 100. So I will compute the uh, the present value, which is the value of the bond on 15 March 2021. So that's 103.50479. Now, of course, this is not the value that we want. Okay, we will need to compound this to 17th of May, 2021. Right, now, uh, from now, we need to determine the number of days from 15 March 2021 to 17 May 2021. So that will be a total of 63 days. And from 15 March to 15 September 2021, that will be a total of 184 days. So since we are doing it on an actual, actual day count convention, so we will need to base it on the actual number of days per month. From 15 of March to the end of March, which is 31st March, there would be 16 days there to the end of the month. And then for April, there will be 30 days. And up to 17 May, from so from 1st to 17 May, that would be uh, 17 days. So if you add up uh, these three periods here, Okay, you will get 63 days. All right. Now, if you are calculating from 15 March to 15 of September, then uh, we will have to take from April. Okay, then uh, in this case, I'll just rewrite it again. So we have April, uh, we have May, June, July, August. Okay, and also up to 15 September. So April will be 30 days, May will be 31, June is 30, July is 31, August is 31, and up to 15 September, that's 15 days, plus uh, for fi from 15 March, that is uh, 16 days to the end of the month. All right, so if you add up all this uh, number of days, you will get 184 days. Okay, so that's how you get, uh, how, that's how you calculate the number of days. Now, of course, uh, you can also use the financial calculator to get the number of days if you want to do that. So uh, before we uh, go to that, uh, let's just check out the formatting. Okay, so in this case, in the financial calculator, now I'm using the US date format, which is months, days, and years. So some of you may be using the European date format, which is days, months, and years. Okay, so you have to be careful with uh, the date format that is set in your calculator. Okay, that affects how you enter the dates. So let's, I'll just revert it back to the US date format. Then you can press uh, second, and then we click on date, which is number one, okay? So the first date uh, we're gonna enter here would be 15 of March, 2021. So we're gonna enter second one, okay, to go into the date function, right? And then uh, the date, the first date we're going to enter here will be 15 of March 2021. So based on the month, which is March, so that's 3 for March, point, decimal, uh, then the date, 15, and then the year, 21. Okay, and then you press enter. That's 15 March 2021. Okay, up to uh, the second date here will be 17 of May. So May will be 5 in terms of months. Okay, point one seven two one. Okay, so that gives us 17 May 2021. And if you scroll down and scroll down again, there's 360. This is based on a 3, uh, 30 360 day count convention. I'll press second enter to change this to actual actual. And then I'll go back up and press days between dates, which is 63 days. Okay, so just to confirm the number. And then for the last, uh, the, the next one is up to 15 September. So that's uh, 9 for September, 0.1521. Okay, so that uh, now the days between dates will be 184 days. Okay, just to uh, verify the number. So we're done with that. So now what we'll do is uh, we will compound. Okay, we will compound the present value of the bond from 15 March 2021 to 17 of May 2021. 
So it's just a simple compounding. Okay, we'll take 103.50479 and we will multiply it by 1.029. 2.9% here would be 5.8% over 2 and then raise it to the power of bracket 63 over 184 close bracket. Okay, so that would be 104.52288. So this would be the full price or the dirty price of the bond on 17 May 2021. Okay, this would be the dirty price or what we call the invoice price. This is the price that the buyer will have to pay to the seller. Okay, that includes the accrued interest from 15 March 2021 to 17 May 2021. Now, of course, if you are asked to work out the flat price or the clean price, you will need to calculate the accrued interest, okay, which is based on 63 over 184, okay, uh, multiplied by 3.25. Okay, so that gives us uh, 1.11277. And then we subtract this from the full price and that gives us the flat price. Now, can we do this in the financial calculator? Yes, you can. Okay, there is in fact a bond function that allows you to do that. Now, going back to the financial calculator, you can press second nine. So that goes into the bond function. So the settlement date SDT would be the date, okay, uh, 17th of May, 2021. So I'll key in the month, May, okay, uh, that's uh, 0 0.17 for 17, and then 21. So that gives us a settlement date. And then if you scroll down the coupon, we enter it in annual terms. So that would be 6.5 instead of 3.25. You have to key in the annual coupon and then uh, redemption date will be the maturity date which is uh, March okay there's 3.1527 and then uh, scroll down redemption value is the power value 100 and uh, we are using actual to actual so change the mode here to actual and then for the uh, payment period that's 2 over y that's 2 times a year the other option is once a year okay uh, but we'll change it back to twice a year for semi-annual coupon and then uh, the yield will be 5.8% key in the annual yield and then uh, we'll calculate the price okay so the price here is 103.41011 this is the flat price or the clean price and if you scroll down you have the accrued interest which is 1.11277 okay so if you need to get the, uh, the full price you just have to add up the flat price and the accrued interest so if I uh, just conveniently store this as number one, I'll scroll up to the flat price and add in recall one. So that gives me the full price of 104.52288. Now, what if the accrued interest is based on a 30 over 360 day count convention? So in other words, this assumes that every month would, there would be 30 days, okay, rather than following the actual number of days. So even February, March uh, would be 30 days each, okay? Even January uh, for May, July, August, we will assume that it's 30 days per month. So using the same figures as well, okay, we have calculated up to the present value of the bond on 15 March 2021. So now to determine the number of days from 15 March to 17 of May, so we'll assume that it's just 30 days every month. So from 15 March to end of March, there would be 15 days, okay? So keep in mind, for every period, it will be just uh, 30 days, okay? So from uh, 15th of March to 30th of March, okay, we assume 30 days. There will be 15 days there. And then for April, there would be 30 days. And up to 17th of May, that would be 17 days, okay? So that is uh, 62 days here. But if you're doing it from 15 March to 15th of September, so from 15 March to end of March, which is just uh, based on the 30 days assumption. So that's 15, April 30, uh, then for uh, May, 30 days as well. Okay, so June, July, August. Okay, that's all 30 days. So we can conveniently multiply this by five months. Okay, times five here, that's 150 days. And then uh, for 15 September, that's another 15 days there. Okay. So this will be a total of 180 days, All right? So that's for uh, 3360 day count convention. And then uh, we will compound the value of the bond from 15 March 2021 to 17 May 2021. 
All right, so that gives us 104.52901. So if I enter 103.50479 times 1.029 to the power of 62 over 180, Okay, so that gives us 104.52901. Now, if you want to use a bond function, uh, all you need to do is press second 9. Okay, the inputs are as before. Uh, but what we need to do now is to just change it from actual to the 360. Okay, so then uh, we'll calculate the price. The price will be 103.409.5701. This is the... Uh, this is the flat price, and then this is the accrued interest. Let's just double check the number. So that's 1.11944, okay, which is 62 days over 180 times 3.25. Okay, so that gives us 1.11944. Subtract that from the full price, and we get the flat price. Okay, so this is 103.40957. Okay, so that is the flat price. You can add it to the accrued interest to get the full price.